Hello, I'm Carol Massey. In this programme, I'm going to do a portrait of an adult, of Lisa, using water-soluble pencils. I've chosen a photograph, which is a studio photograph, so it's good quality. I've done an enlarged photocopy, which I've then traced over, and I've traced that image down onto my watercolour paper. I'm going to start by masking out the highlights. First, I'm going to do the highlights in the hair. Um, and using some nice long sweeping strokes and plenty of highlights. I've added a little bit more hair. I've changed the pose a little bit from my original photograph because she was leaning at quite, a, quite an angle. So I've straightened her up a little bit and as a consequence just added a little bit more hair on the left hand side. Now I'm going to use a little brush to put in the highlights in the eyes. I'm going to, rather than just have a pinpoint of light in the middle, which sometimes happens uh, with photography, I'm going to just increase the highlight a little bit. Highlights are very important, um, particularly with the nose and the lips. They really give a shape and form uh, to the features. And the bottom lip is receiving highlight here. Again, this is important. It will give shape and form to the contour of the lips. There's a little bit of light coming in here. You can see I've left out the necklace she was wearing. I thought that was a little bit complicated, but I do want to paint in the lacy top here that she's wearing. I think this is attractive. Now we just need to let that masking fluid dry. Okay, the masking fluid is dry now, so now I'm going to get on with the colouring. I'm going to use uh, a range of pencil. I'm going to start with um, a Sicilian yellow. I'm actually using ink tense pencils, but if you're using water soluble, you could use um, a raw sienna or yellow ochre. So it's a question of covering uh, fresh tone lightly, sort of with the side of the pencil, not pressing too hard. I've got some highlight on the cheek and a highlight on the forehead there, which I'm going to just sort of avoid slightly. That's the yellow. Now I'm going to go on to the vermilion. It's a good idea to try your colours out first before you commit them to, the, to your portrait. Um, they can look quite different when you've added the water to how they look in the, in the, in the pencil. Be a little bit careful when you're going around the masking fluid not to pick it off with the end of the pencil. And we're going to put a little bit of uh, carmine on the lips. And a little bit of scarlet. Around the cheek area. Oh, yeah, I have to be careful there. Look, that's just lifting a little bit. Just watch out for that. Again, a little bit of red into the tear duct. Tiny bit, not too much. I don't want to look like a vampire. Um, and some dusk, I've got some dusky purple just to start the shadows here around the hairline. I'm going to go just put a little bit of that yellow up into the hair as well. I should have done that. Go back to my shadow around here. Across here. And let's just, just put some colour in the neck as well. We can grow across the hair a little bit because the hair is going to be darker. And that mid vermilion as well. And our dusky purple too. Just going in lightly first because we can always add a bit more colour later on. Now I'm going to put some colour into the hair. So I'm going to start with the saddle brown, which is our mid brown. Now again, you have to be quite careful um, and sort of colour between the masking fluid. 
Just put a little bit of colour down. We can always add colour later directly from the pencil. A little bit darker here where her sort of a parting. It needs to be quite dark in here, going into her shoulder. another brown slightly uh, this is the one that's like a pale sepia so it's more of a, a darker tone Let's come in here as well this is a bit darker this is sort of behind the main body of her hair here this bit flicking out and just use the third brown so we've got a variety of colors you don't have to make it all the same color um, to say sometimes hair appears dark in the photograph, get a nice little colour in it. You can always calm it down afterwards. So being very careful that you don't lift off the masking fluid with your pen end of the pencil. Nice sharp pencils, of course. Make sure they're nice and sharp when you use them. Okay, now I'm going to have a go at drawing the clothing. Um, I'm going to change the colour of her shirt a little bit. We've got quite a lot of these ochery browny colours, so I think I'm going to go for a contrast and make it a bit of a, a sort of a green colour. So I'm going to use a dark aqua and the and the, uh, the other green, which is iron green. Here's my dark aqua. Again, I'm using the pencil on the side. Uh, it's easier to blend it in like this. I don't really want any pencil marks um, apparent. I want it to be a nice sort of uh, soft graded wash. So I'm using the pencil on its side rather than using the point. This is the other green going in now. It's a little bit darker. Let's get some of that dark behind the collar. And round through the clothing. A bit darker in here. And a few streaks of uh, deeper indigo to in, just to indicate the creasing. Right, I'm just going to do some details in the features now, starting with the eyes, um, using a sort of pale, pale, fairly neutral brown, not too, not too much of a reddish brown. Um, this is actually called oak in the in ink tense, but you could just use a pale brown. Eyebrows, and just drawing in the lid of the eye, and then the eyelashes can be a little bit darker, so we'll go in with sepia. We've got a reddish brown called Madder Brown, which is um, it's just slightly warmer than the other browns. So I'm going to use that for the bottom lid and into the into the iris. Go and do the other side. Again, bottom lid, a little bit below there, and just get the pupil in. slightly darker round line defining the outer edge of the iris there. Define the nose a little bit better and go back in with my madder brown for the nostrils here. 
and I'm also going to use that colour to go and just define the lips a little bit more. We've got this uh, shadow, this the corner of the mouth here is always darker and it, it's, it sort of increases that slight smile that she's got um, on her lips. I'm going to just darken the top lip a fraction. It's, the top lip is, usually receives more shadow than the bottom lip because of the, um, the predominant light coming from above. A bit darker in here, around here, just define the ear a little bit more. And the neck, shadow on the neck. Right, I think we ought to put some water on that now, don't you?